Listen to Career Paths by Implement every Thursday. You might learn something. You might not. Available on Apple Podcasts, on Spreaker, Spotify, on Google, and IR Radio. It's your life. Make, Make it, it happen. happen. My phone, I just... Okay. Yeah. Let me know when you're ready. When you're ready. I'm asking Butthead. No, when it's when no, you're No, are you ready? No, it's when he's ready. I'm never ready. I'm, just, I'm ever ready? Yeah, ever ready. Okay. Battery on. Been ready? You're good. Wait, <laughs> give me a longer pause. <laughs> <laughs> just had to. All right, you're good. Oh, I know I'm good, but just like... Mediocre. No, I'm good. Well, okay. you, you told me that. Never mind. We, yeah, <sighs> Welcome to Career Paths by Infonet. I'm your host, Victor Boudreau. Today, our guest is Keith Witt. That, Keith, that is correct. Keith, what do you do for what's what's your career, Keith? What do you, what's your main career that you're doing to make a living at this point of your life? Let's uh, clarify that. Other than being a grown-up child, um, I work out at the Air Force Base in our local area as. A program manager for a recycling company. So basically, I get to pick up recycling. So recycle, reuse, reduce. Is this just all sorts of uh, recycling? Anything, everything? Just it was residential, commercial? Is there is there a difference that way? By the way, how's that for a question? Yeah, I mean there is a difference. We don't do like gigantic commercial stuff, okay. but in essence, you could look at it commercially because we are on an air force base, right, so right, everybody right. works. Right. Um, and they do have a residential area. But we luckily don't have to pick that up because oh. they're pigs. Um, <laughs> hey, I lived out there when I was a kid. So you were I, a pig. I, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> I was a kid. I was an Air Force brat. Come on. Uh, but, but I mean, it's your basic necessities. Or I guess that's not the right word, but, you know, plastics and cardboard. Sure. And, okay. And from, fun, from so. all over the base. Oh, yeah, all over the base. Okay. Um, so let's get a little bit. A little bit of background on yourself. Uh, age, rank, serial number. Oh, wait, you're not in the middle. Uh, not anymore. Not anymore. You were. We'll, we'll touch on that. So age, you don't have to give it specific, but if you want to. How so old I'm you? old. I'm in my 30s. Okay. I'm 34 this year. God, you're old. God, I think I'm 34. You're my married? kid always has to remind me that. Well, She always comes up to me. She goes, you're old. You're 34 this year. And I'm like, jeez, honey, thanks. I love you too. Don't worry. She'll catch up when she gets there. Yeah. I'm just you'll like, be you're old, young gorgeous. lady. Exactly. Uh, you're married? I am. Uh, wife, we've been together 18 years this year, 12 years of marriage. Wow. She's put up with you that long. Yeah. Wow. I, as they say, you have to marry up, and I totally married up. <laughs> I um, agree. I'm I've not... got three kids, uh, two boys and a girl. The my age girl is my names. youngest. The age is uh, names. Wanna... 17, almost 15, just turned 13. Ryan is my oldest. He's 17. He doesn't get out of bed unless he's gaming. Um, or he better be on his driver's ed Zoom call right now. Is grounded. Um, what was my, his name again? Ryan. Ryan, get on your, you know, get on it. Dad, you can't live off a of dad something. all your life. Uh, Nehemiah, he will be 15 in March. Um, he is my sports stud. Very, very much reminds me of myself when I was that age. Less cocky, but. Um, You're pretty arrogant yourself right now. Sometimes. <laughs> Only on days that end in Y. Huh. And then my daughter is 13. She had a oh, birthday on the 2nd, so wow. she's a teenager. Oh, my God. Her Lucky name you. is Alariana. Um, for whatever reason, the wife and I agreed to torture our kids for 18 years, so we gave them all two middle names. Two middle names? Yeah. So okay, it's, clarify that It's one. Ryan, Jameson, Nathaniel, Nehemiah, David, Marquise. Wit. And Alariana, Isabel, Sky. Wit. Yes. Or, or as my, my daughter says, it's Ski Dad because you can't use an accent mark on my birth certificate. So it's spelled S-K-I. Good for her. So uh, your oldest son's 17 and you're 34. I'm 34. 10 days before my 17th birthday, junior year in high school, we popped out a kid. Wow. That's what I was adding up really fast. Going, it's 34. Seconds. You add? Come on. Oh, well, I, I do use both. You are a drummer. You can only count to four. Four. But do boom. Come on, Kit. Keith, I know all these jokes. I mean, yeah, well. What do you call a drummer? Uh, how do you get a drummer off your porch? Oh. Pay for the pizza? Pay for the pizza. Uh, what do you call a drummer in a three-piece suit? Defendant? Dead. Dead. <laughs> Defendant? 
Moving on. I got more. Uh, so doing this, how long have you been doing the uh, recycle? So I've been out of the Air Force Base now for, this is my fourth year. I was just a quote-unquote general recycle specialist for the first three years. And then um, they, they say the Air Force is where you go to retire. Really? Which is pretty much true. I worked with some 60 and 70 year olds oh, and sure. they finally retired. So, But that's I, what they were in the military. They were previously. Okay, so then they came and back then out. And they came back for a civilian contractor oh, because why wow. not when they pay you a ridiculous amount of money to if, do your job. And if they're on retirement already. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so the hours and the pay really didn't matter to them. They just were like, so I'm the, 76 years old. I should probably go home to my wife. Whether she wants me to or not. <laughs> yes. I, I think I've seen them more now than I did when they showed up to work. <laughs> oh, they come out and visit all the time? Oh, all the time. Nice. Uh, so, uh, we're going to I get start. High school, you had a kid when you were 17? Yes. You were in high school? I was. Um, did you graduate from high school? I did. I graduated from high school. So, I, I ran away from home when I was 15. I used to live in Kansas. That's where I spent most of my life with my dad. Was Dorothy? Never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> Funny story. Side note. And there you were. And there I was next to Dorothy's house. Go I, I lived I lived 11 miles from Dorothy's house where they actually shot the Wizard of Oz. Wow, so, I was just joking, didn't I? <laughs> so I have, we're not in Kansas anymore jokes all the time. Every single day I was here in high school, it was, well, you know we're not in Kansas, Dorothy. And I'm like, whatever. <laughs> Let's go watch the Wizard of Oz. How about no? You've seen it once or twice, sorry. Or 10 million times like it would million times. okay so 15 you, you you so i ran away from home at 15 um creative differences with my father let's just put it that way um, it happens a lot with teenage boys and dads i uh, got on a greyhound bus worst mistake of my life uh for... another greyhound yeah we just had another channel we we did recently that was talking about took a trip from california to uh, spokane northwest on a greyhound on a bus well that one's not terrible i guess i was 40 uh, and a half hours uh, on a greyhound yeah, bus wow yeah that, about that, double double what this other channel <laughs> um yeah. Yeah, that was the only fun, and I still remember it to this day. The only fun part is I sat next to this little um, Australian girl, and I love accents, and we just talked for like 30 hours. Wow. Because I'm like, just talk so I can hear your voice, because that's just amazing to me. If I could do accents, I would just talk in an accent all day. You talk like a redneck, kind of. Eh, well. Okay. <laughs> Pushing. Come on, come on. It was, that's the only one I can probably do, and I probably, yeah. Probably, yeah. Fail. Uh, Fail. So you came out here? So came I came out, You so came I, out west? I came out west, came up north. My biological mom lived here. Okay. So I was like, hey, let's go see if the grass is greener on the other side. You know, I'm 15. It wasn't. Um, <laughs> That's I, usually, the, usually the case, too, in anything in life. I've been on my own ever since. Let's just say that. Okay. Um, so when you got here, so you, you got here and went to, you were going to school? Where were, were so you I got here September mom? 22nd, 2002. So and I can you remember in, exactly when that was? Um, uh, yes, 1.41 a.m. Sucker for numbers. It's the only time the Greyhound bus comes in <laughs> between 1.30 and 2 in the morning. Um, my mom picked me up, not quite sober, and took me home. And well, that's nice of her. At least she picked you up, not sober. True. Uh, I had no idea what I was doing, where I was going. Three days later, I found myself being arrested and taken to Secure CRC, Child Runaway Center. My dad had filed a runaway oh, report okay. on me. Thank you. And spent three days there. Good times. Um, not terrible times, except for I was pretty much locked up in my room for, you know, 20 hours a day. Got okay. out for school, and they were supposed to go back to your room. Okay. On the third day, I decided to run away, so I hopped the fence <laughs> and escaped. How'd that work for you? Uh, I was fine for about three weeks, and then they... I was driving a vehicle that had two tinted up windows. I had no idea. Okay. So I got pulled over for that, rearrested. And, and how old were you at that? I was 15 and a half. So you're driving. Almost so you, 16. You didn't have your license, did you, at that point? Anyway? I had my uh, learner's permit, if that counts. I did it. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, you know, I went to school in starting in December of, of 2002 and met my wife um, in an all girls choir. Huh. It was. Um, imagine, if you will, <laughs> a very skinny white kid with a wife beater on and cut off jean shorts, now known as jorts, sitting in the middle of an all girls choir in first period with his arms out like, all right, I'm in class. I finally showed up and 
and my choir teacher, who was probably my favorite teacher ever. And her name? Uh, Mrs. Blair. Okay. She has... Shout out to Mrs. Blair. She has since passed due to oh. cancer, however, but probably one of my favorite teachers. She's like, young man, can I help you? And I'm like, well, yeah, I'm supposed to be in choir. And she goes, do you sing soprano? No, I don't even know what that is. Do you sing an alto? <laughs> like, I'm pretty much a bass or a baritone. And she's like, get out. <laughs> But my schedule says I'm supposed to be here. She goes, yeah, you're supposed to be in fifth period. Go have it changed. And that's the first time I actually met my now wife. Uh, we had a couple other classes together. I cheated off of her in math class a lot. <laughs> I was one of these kids. Oh, that's what the answer is. He's looking over. Like, over the shoulder. the shoulder. So he can give an example of what he did. Yep. You cheater, cheater. And she knew it? Oh, she knew it. Okay. She was one that would like hold the paper up. <laughs> So I could kind of just so she peep felt, over and so see. So she felt sorry for you then too. Oh yeah, okay. for sure. Sorry, that was mean. But uh, we started this dating December twenty first, two thousand two. How do you remember these dates? That's your your dates. Your numbers. I'm a numbers have. guy, okay. and yeah. It's, okay. And if I don't, my wife would probably kill me. Okay. So. Okay, so uh, you graduated from high school with a kid. Graduated from high school with a kid. With your wife. With my wife. Were you together, living together? Are you guys still? We moved in pre pretty much as soon as we found out she was pregnant. Okay. And which is super hard at 16. I would imagine. Nobody wants to rent to you, i.e. number one, you don't have a job. That might, money might be an issue. And number two, you're not 18, so you can't legally bind into a contract. Mm -hmm. um, and we just happened to meet a, a ra literally a random guy uh who was the owner of the big dipper a club here a in club spokane here in washington Spokane. yep in that club uh tavern bar yeah so he was the owner at the point and he goes you know what i actually have a little studio apartment that i would run out to you for x amount of dollars and everything else comes with it would pay your electric would pay your wow water sewage garbage all you have Considering to do is where you're at in life that was covering Making it. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so I had to go find my first job, which ended up being telemarketing. Okay. How long did you do that? Uh, <laughs> How well did you do at that? I did very well, actually. I was the, what they call a floor walker, not a street walker. Get your mind out of the gutter. I, I, I was you a didn't even give me a chance. <laughs> I was a floor walker within the first hour What's after. What's a floor walker? So it's basically kind of like a supervisor manager person. Really? So I knew the job well enough after training mm -hmm. that after my first hour on the phones, they actually heard like how I interacted with customers. They're like, oh, you can answer everything that any of these representatives are going to ask you. Other people that were doing that. So position. yeah, so you can just walk around the floor and anytime somebody raises their hand, wow. you take supervisor you were, calls. You were 17 or 18? I was 17. Still, wow. Yep. Okay. Uh, so that was my first job. How long did that? And paid that, or paid that for six months. I did that for six months. I got fired on New Year's Day. Nice, nice. For not following proper call full of procedure. I did not ask if the customer was satisfied with the way I resolved his issues. issues. And because lying. I didn't ask that question, they fired me on the spot. Wow, that one. Okay. So nothing else you did? That was the only job I had until... Oh, what was I think my next job after that was Safeway as a courtesy clerk. Was your, wife, groceries. was your wife working? She was not working. She was in she, high school full time. I did. Um, and taking care of, yeah, we were taking care of Ryan, our oldest now. And I did do my junior and senior year. I did do um, kind of an on the job training at, at Deaconess Medical, Medical Center. Um, a local hospital. Local hospital. So I did patient transport. So I picked up patients and moved them around the hospital to their little appointments and stuff. Okay. So I got college credit for that and ended up getting hired on at Deaconess on my 18th birthday for that. How long? Um, wow. Worked there for a couple of years, on and off for a couple of years. Um, but the whole host of jobs that I've had between the ages of 16, 16 and- 17 and 34. And 34 now is ridiculous. And there's a, we have a question later that asks how many jobs you've had, so- we'll... I couldn't count. Okay. I, I was at one point where if I was bored with a job within the first couple of days, I would quit and go find something else. So obviously you never had a challenge or had the problem with yourself going, I'm going to have issues doing anything else. I can find screw that. I'll do this. Or I can I, do some, I'll always do something. I'll yeah. Always find something. So I got my work ethic from my dad. Uh, my dad always had a job no matter what. Uh, my dad was a raging alcoholic growing up, <clears throat> but uh, 
made it to work every single day no matter what functioning alcoholic very functioning and made sure he paid bills made sure that we were were living and so i got that work ethic from my father so even bouncing around from from job to job i knew i would make ends meet somehow some way so i didn't care what i did i mean i went from obviously i loaded and unloaded trucks to working overnights at walmart was probably the worst job i ever had well, you, one job you told me about uh, pre-interview, you used to pick up uh, dead people or how, what's the actual term on that one? Because I just, that mortifies me. I, I'm not a medical for person. I'm not blood and guts and, but you had to go. I am up. very blood and guts. And I, people always told me I should probably be like a nurse or a doctor or something right. because I, I used to watch surgeries while I did patient transport in high school. Like I used to go in there and be like, oh, this is amazing. Some people are that um, way. I get, I have a buddy that was on the show. Um, he's a physical therapist. He loved playing the cadavers when he was going mm -hmm. to school. He used to share that with me. He's like, eh. I can do certain things, but like the only thing that disgusts me as a human being for whatever reason is poop. Okay. I can deal with vomit and blood all day long, okay. but if somebody like feces at me or oh, yeah. around me, even my kids, like I hated wiping butts. Right. I truly hated wiping butts because I'm like, I've never done that. It's poop. Yeah, <laughs> I can't never, deal with poop. Never. Had, I don't have kids, grandkids that will never do it. But my. So currently on, on Wednesdays and Sundays, I'm a youth pastor at a, at a church here in town, Living Hope. And How long have you been doing that? It's my fourth or fifth year. I lose Come on, track. Don't you, don't you have your numbers? Come on. I do. Okay. I lose track of fourth time with the kids, you know, though. So it's... Is that because it's enjoyable? Oh, it's very much enjoyable. I absolutely love it. Um, so I lose track of, of that specific. But the fo former youth pastor knew a guy and it... it he was like, hey, so I do this on the side. Is this something you would think about doing? And I'm like, what exactly do you do? He's like, oh, I, I work for the medical examiner's office. And I was like, well, well that sounds intriguing, but that's all he told me. <laughs> he didn't elaborate at all. Okay. And so my very first call, I go out and he goes. So uh, wait, wait, but if he says you got the job, so you you had to contact somebody? Somebody you said, oh, you're going to do... You said, sure, I'll do this. And somebody says, I'll just call you, call you when like, we I'll need you. He's like, I'll call you when we need you. Oh. Yep, there was no like 1099 to fill out, no anything like probably that. Probably because they didn't have enough people last. But... Probably. <laughs> the last three guys were probably dead. They had to pick them up. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, he was just like, hey, I'll call you when we need you. When the medical examiner's office calls, I'll call you. And I'm like, okay. Whatever that Shrugs is. my shoulder, whatever we're doing. I So we show up to a... A crime scene inevitably it was a, a suicide and and he goes all right you need to he goes when you show up to the scene you're going to show up in khakis and a collared shirt because that's our quote-unquote dress code because we have to look professional when we show okay. up and then you probably want to wear boots i'm like okay whatever so that's what i showed up in and showed up to our first scene and he goes put these gloves on put this mask on put this um menthol cream under your nose because it's probably going to smell and i'm like wait a second are we working around dead bodies he goes yep and this one's been decomposing for three weeks oh it was the worst ever that was the first time doing it in first That's introduction first introduction to this you? new job i almost quit <laughs> i almost quit on the spot um the smell lasted in my taste buds for probably three days couldn't smell, couldn't eat, could nothing without tasting the smell of that corpse. We, we talked before, and so I know some. you gave me some of the stories, and it's horrendous, some horrendous uh, scenes you've dealt with. It, they are, they're pretty horrendous, but, you know, life starts with birth and ends with death. And if you understand the process, picking up a body is not really that bad. Okay. For in you. my eyes. For you. Yeah, for me. I don't, still don't, yeah, no. So, okay, so you did that. How long did you do that? I did that for a little over a year and uh, enjoyed it. But there were some differences that uh, my buddy and I had with the owner of the company that we just both decided that at we... At the same time? Just we're yeah, done. we both quit at the same time pretty much and left him and one other guy, the owner and one other guy. And that's life. And that's life. Uh, so where'd you go from there, work-wise? Where did I go from there? Um... I did a couple kind of odds and end office jobs. Okay. Um, never really liked being in an office sitting at a computer. Yeah, you don't you don't seem to be the type. And then um, I thought I would be though because I'm such a numbers guy and I was working around numbers all day, but it just was not it. Yeah. Showing up at five thirty every morning, which means I had to wake up at four thirty in the morning. At least. 
to get there and actually be functional at 530 was not not the business keyword functional yeah um so i got a phone call from a buddy of mine who was a server at a local restaurant here in town and says hey we're opening a new restaurant downtown waitress waiter type deal. do you want to be do you want to come interview to be a waiter waitress and i was like well do i get to wear a dress because i'll be a waitress <laughs> <laughs> no you do uh, anybody listening to this audio just check out our facebook career paths on facebook and you can well have pictures probably to keep <laughs> You won't, sorry, Keith. I'm not Show sure. off my chesticles. You're you're not going to be cute in a dress. I don't care what dress you have on. What you? I'm just my opinion. When I worked at the call center, I dressed up as a girl for Halloween. I won the contest. That just says you were. That just says you look good as a girl. It just said you were one of the best costumes. Very uh, freaking, best people costume, freaking people out. Freaking people out. I'll go with that one. It's like what the. So we opened. I helped open a new restaurant uh, here in town that okay. lasted. Well, not because of COVID. It lasted right about five years, and COVID had to close it down. Happened to a lot of smaller businesses. A lot of smaller businesses. 176 in this state so far. And uh, the mandates by our uh, governor. <clears throat> so we won't touch on that. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> so I served. I was a server for a little over three years amongst doing other things, and that's... Now, you talked about... Were you in the military? I was in the Marine Corps 2007. Uh, in the military. military. Uh, I was in the military for a um, little over two years. Okay. And I, because we talked, we chatted about this, so that's why I'm bringing it up. Uh, what was what was your specialty or what was your uh, job description? In? Zero five hundreds, I was supply and accounting. Okay. So if you wanted it ordered, you came to me. Okay. Whether it was a paperclip, a box of paperclips, oh, yeah. or... But you had a different story that you, you were telling me. No, I'm getting to that part. Okay, thank Whether you. it was a box of paper clips okay. or okay. some ordinances that might need to be blown up. Okay. You came to me and I got to order it for you. Okay. If I wanted to see things go big boom, I got to order extra things to see things go big boom. <laughs> and then I got to push the button. And when you're friends with the EOD guys, oh. you're going to see lots of things explode. Okay. So those are, those huh. are fun times. You, I'm still waiting for another story. We might, we might have to, you know, splice this one around and give you a heads up. <laughs> but I thought you were talking about when you were shooting something or shooting somewhere or something along those lines. Did you do that? Or you, was that? You've been in combat? Yeah, I've been in combat. Okay. We don't typically talk about combat very okay. often. Okay. Well, we can skip that if you're not comfortable with it. I understand. I just thought some interesting, and I don't I want to delve, but you dealt with uh, some uh, situations from what you described to me. Um, having to deal with uh, combat en enemy combatants. Enemy combatants. I would use that term. I know the exact amount that I've shot at, the exact amount I've injured, and the okay. almost exact amount I've killed. So you've actually had you actually aware that you. I'm aware that I've taken lives. Okay, that's all I want to touch on. I don't, if you don't, I don't, I'm very aware that I've taken. So, and that's the whole when I when I was able to see that side of things becoming. A coroner, I guess, is what they call them when you pick up dead bodies. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty I guess so. easy. So it's a lot easier. Okay. I guess. So you done. So military coroner was first. Military first. Okay. Because you see, you skipped that getting the coroner. I just. That's why I wanted to get back to. Yeah. No. Yeah. Military you, is first. Okay. Um. And you were only a couple years. Only a couple years. Got military discharged. I blew out my my knee, and they wanted to do a total knee replacement. And I said, not by a Marine Corps doctor. Bruh. <laughs> Don't try. I uh, yeah. I know some stories about that too since my dad's retired air force yes yeah i've heard stories i didn't want to deal with it exactly. so I said, they said uh you can either get a knee replacement and basically sit at a desk job for the next for, for the rest of your life but yeah or we can release you to the civilian world and right let deal with it from there and to this day i have not had a knee replacement so wow brain replacement yet is that working on frontal lobotomy i mean my son keeps talking like it's something you can do but I don't think they're quite there yet. Okay, just I'm just asking. But you know, I'm not the medical guy. I'm just we were at the trying to help you out. We we're at the DMV yesterday getting his driver's permit, and they asked if he wanted to be an organ donor. And I so I looked at him. He goes, "It has to be okay with your dad." And he goes, "Nope." And I said, "You don't want to donate organs?" He goes, "No, I told you, Dad. I want them to cryogenically freeze my body and bring me back to life in 50 years." Okay. Huh. Oh, the lady rolled her eyes so hard in her head. It was the funniest thing. Not heard that one before, is what she said. Yeah. Mm. Well, good for him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Isn't Walt Disney have his head? So they're going to try that sometime? Something. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, anyway. Something. Okay. So 
Trade. So have you actually had any like college or trade school training along the way? So as soon as I got Besides out. Besides the high school that you barely got. Barely scraped being a dad. by. Yeah. Yeah. Barely scraped by. I got it for the wife. Um, so I was a straight A student up until my junior year. Uh, as you can see why with a, with a kid junior year. I, uh, they made the mistake. And the dad got, got in the way of being able to have time of the your own. The school made the mistake of saying, oh, you are now an emancipated minor, so you can call yourself into school for whatever reason. <laughs> I'm like, I'm 17. I don't want to go to school any day. R right. Yeah, my son <coughs> isn't feeling good. <laughs> Calling yourself in? Called myself in a lot. You were um, sick a lot. But I would not recommend that to anybody listening to this either. It's... Um, it required me to write a 10 page essay to graduate because I was a half a credit short. Oh. I had to go in front of the school board, Miss uh, Shelly Redding Redinger, uh, absolutely amazing person. Another person that stands out in your mind? That she was absolutely amazing. She was the superintendent of public schools here in, in town. Uh, she just took another job at the end of last year in uh, another district, but. Um, she helped you and got, She said, a you bit. are going to write a 10 page essay on why you should graduate high school right now. And I said, well, am I going to have to read it in front of anybody? She goes, yeah, you're going to present it in front of the school board. And at this point, I'd pretty much learned that I could BS my way through anything. So I wrote like four paragraphs and then copy pasted for 10 pages. <laughs> the same four paragraphs. And I wow. walked in and I was like, all right, I'm ready. She goes, you ready to read that? And I was like, yes, ma'am. And I didn't have to submit it prior. So she had no idea. And I go to read it, and she goes, thank you for taking the time. Have a good day. I was like, but I'm going to read it. And she goes, we believe you. You've had a kid. We understand times are tough. We're going to graduate you a half a credit short. It was a health credit. Wow. So obviously, I didn't take the sex ed part of gym <laughs> class. <laughs> still haven't. Still don't know what's happening. Still don't working. know what's going on. <laughs> um, after that, so I went to the Marine Corps 2007, got out, and then went straight to college. Um, my wife's mom is a pharmacy technician. She's been that for 20 plus years. Okay. Um, is that what you were going to go? So I went to be a pharmacy tech. She says it's, it's fun. It's medically inclined, but you don't have to go through a ton of schooling. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, fine, cool. So I go and apply and they're like, well, there's a nine month wait list. I'm like, well, I can't really wait to go to college because <laughs> I have to find something now. Right. And then, wife and, kids. and then two weeks later, Probably about a month prior to school starting, I get a call from um, Sandy Schrader, who was my teacher. Um, she says, you've been accepted into the pharmacy tech program. You start in four weeks. Wow. Like, I thought there was a nine-month wait list. She goes, yeah, we went through the wait list. I don't know what happened, but I jumped to the top of the wait list. Could maybe pull some strings or... I didn't don't, don't, talk to anybody. No, I just... No, no, I'm just saying maybe she helped along the way. No. Huh. Wow. So yeah, I went in, did my nine months of training, graduated top 2% of my class, got a job. Couldn't get a job at the hospital, which is where they actually pay you decent money to do the job. Right. Um, so I worked at a little, I don't even call it a pharmacy really. We worked with old people and delivered pre-packaged meds to like retirement centers sure. and stuff like that. Okay. So I did that for her four years and um, Got a job offer at Culligan bottling water, making two dollars more an hour. After I had just done all this college, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll do physical labor for two dollars more an hour." That's more money. Take care of the yeah. I was mean, your was your wife going to school at the time? Or so she was. Yeah. So we've both been in and out of college for for years. At that, I mean. Okay. Um, but I ended up getting my pharmacy tech degree or license, I guess, uh, my general AA or AAS uh, for community college. And then my wife went to school for medical billing and coding. As she was going to school, she ended up finding a job at a company that's now no longer around. They got bought out. But she had worked there for four or five, six years, something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a long time. And then she never actually completed her degree because she learned more OJT on the job training than that's she typical. ever did right. in, in college. And she would have been a licensed billing encoder had she taken the test. But my wife has anxiety test anxiety mm. so she Some didn't want to do. pay the godly amounts of money to take the test three four hundred dollars to take this test wow. to potentially fail. fail and then have to redo it and then have to repay and redo it so oh, she just yeah. kept working 
Yeah. Well, and that's what she did. And at that point, so we had our third kid by the time we were 21. Wow. What to do with the school, did you, what obstacles did you do? Student loans? Did you, how'd you pay for that? Or was there a... Fi uh... So I guess the, the blessing about having a kid early is there's lots of financial aid they like to give. <laughs> okay. Parents, um, especially at community colleges here. Really? Here locally. So oh. yes, I had some student loans. Um, I... I took out the max every quarter that I could, which was a, a really big mistake on my part, but not having any guidance. I didn't have a guidance counselor. I didn't have a parent in my life that had gone to college at that point that could say, Hey, don't do this or do this. Yeah. Or don't do this. Don't this. do that kind of thing. Okay. So I took out the max, everything I could because, Oh, I want to be able to pay. And we did smart things. We paid everything three months in advance. Cause that's when we got our tuition money. Okay. But we did stupid things like, oh, I'm going to go find an $800 cheap car that runs like crap and drive it and waste money but on if it. You, but if you would have spent the $800 in car that ran for a couple of years, that would have been a better investment. I'm yeah. just saying, there, oh, yeah. check, check it out. I mean, the $800 per se wasn't the mistake. It was just the it vehicle. It was the that, vehicle that, that we did ended up choosing, up getting, yeah. Right. And so that sometimes, if you know a guy, fortunately, my I don't know cars. I know guys. Mm -hmm. And I'm to the point in my life where I know guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, we we Let took out know. the max student loans. We got a lot of financial aid. Um, right. Very surprising amount of financial aid for having two kids at that point when we were. You think they were just paid to stop, but they basically paid me to go to school. Right. No, no. I, where I didn't having kids. Well, no, saying. they. No. They figured that's how they'll get them to stop. Put no. them in school. Uh, yeah, put them in yeah. school. Yeah, no, it didn't. <laughs> didn't work. So I the next one came along. I did a couple of different things in school. I did. Um, I went to be a pharmacy tech, right. graduated, did all that. When I wanted to become a cop uh, at one point, so I wanted to do the criminal justice program at one of the community colleges here in town. But at that point, we had just had our second kid, and excuse or whatever you guys might call it, I ended up flunking out of uh, college at that point because I just could not put enough time or effort to just having, you know, having a two-year-old and a newborn and going to college. Were you, were you working at that time too? And working, required to work. Lazy. You're just um, lazy, Keith. I'm, calling, <laughs> I'm joking. So, because being on financial aid, you're required to work. And we were on state assistance at that time. Sure. Um, but they required you to work a minimum 20 hours a week. Yeah. And, how, how and a lot of times you can't do that on campus because either all the jobs are filled or right. Yeah, right. they just don't pay enough or they don't give you enough hours. Um, so, at that point, we were both working at Walmart. Um, you know, 30 to 40 hours a week wow. or as much, we would take as many hours as Walmart would give us because right. they don't like paying full-time employees. You're correct. So they don't have to do certain things, but we were the ones that people called when a shift was given up. Hey, somebody called in. Can you get here? Right. We would go right to work. I've, um, I've done that. This is the way I am. So without some of us, you had different responsibility with kids right. and wife, but I, mean, we, I can go work them work for some hours and make some more money for me that's more money mm -hmm. and so that's uh, that's what we did for a very long time and that's that's the time in my life where I went from job to job to job because okay. between school and kids and being bored at work or something you know yeah. not enjoying what I'm doing well, you know I want to find something else maybe I can find something that I will enjoy doing right and still make money and, and still make money doing my life and you still do it Go to school and do everything else you got to do. If you enjoy work, then it's not really work. That's, right? If you can find something you love to do and make money at it, it's not a job. Um, so do you, do you still have uh, bills for school, you and your wife? I do still Student have bills loans? for school. Uh, not very much. Okay. I'm, I was completely school debt free. Yeah. Uh, and then I decided I wanted to go back to school. How long ago was that? Two years ago, okay. maybe three. Four. Um, I wanted to become... Well, my ultimate goal was I wanted to become an agent, a sports agent. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I am obsessed with sports. And then I found out you had to have a four-year law degree. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that didn't go very far. So did, did I to make a difference? Well, some, yeah. so, I, so I joined a program online, and I am not one that can really de put my efforts towards an online class because it doesn't require me to wake up and go somewhere sir we just had a guest on a young kid talking about trying to finish high school with what's going on in the mm -hmm. world and having to sit at a computer six hours a day and he's made different choices and obviously he went to his counselor at a school and figuring it out so he can enroll into uh college by the spring mm -hmm. and yeah I, I can i 
mentally know what it's like for my kids at this point they have to be on a zoom class because i've tried the online thing right and i just cannot put forth that effort to get up and sit at a desk without falling asleep or without being distracted by something else and put forth effort to get into um into that online stuff i wanted to go for sports management so i could be like a coach or something and know all the ins and outs and then I, from there, I wanted to transfer and become a sports agent and realized I couldn't do four years of law. I could. I could probably do four, year, four years of law, but I've chosen not to. Right, right, right. You, it wasn't going to work in the big picture or, yeah, you want to be enjoy life along the way? Yeah, because, I mean, just imagine making a 3% or 5% cut of, let's say, Patrick Mahomes' 10-year, $500 million That's contract. I mean... Yeah, but, yeah. If I'm, if you're my only client, oh, I pretty much don't have to work for a while. Oh, you lazy son. <laughs> so let's get back to. So you've done lots of things doing doing the uh, recycle thing at this point at the uh, Air Force Base. Mm-hmm. We're gonna go back to that real quick. Forty hours a week ish. Uh, I'm paid for thirty two. Okay. Do you, do you, what do you, when you go to work, what do you do? What's your task? What are your hours? How, what else do you do doing Bright that and early. right now? Because you've been doing it for a few years. Bright and early, it's super nice. Um, you know, I get out there at 7 a.m. in the morning, about 6.30, but open up all the doors and stuff, get ready for my other couple employees to come in. But I have routes on a daily basis, so we drive routes in, the, in a little pickup truck or a dump truck and, and around go... Around the base? Around the base and go... Pick up whatever. Pick up whatever we need to at certain stops on certain days. Sure. Uh, we bring it back to our... I call it the office. It's like a warehouse, mm-hmm. a big giant warehouse. Um, where we have to separate everything from the plastics to the cardboard to typical recycling stuff. white paper colored paper I mean they have all this stuff that needs to be in their separate bins so we get to actually do that okay so we separate it all um, once we get enough of one product we put it in a big baler and it bales it together depending on the product it's anywhere from a couple hundred pounds to a couple thousand pounds and, and you then, just lift it thousand pounds oh by yeah just all day forklift that so i'm a forklift operator as well there you go um so we take that and we stack them up and then you know once every couple of months we ship it out depending on the product so uh, six eight hours a day four four or five days a week it's five days a week and it's i mean it varies on the day mondays and fridays i'm there for four hours tuesday wednesday thursday i'm there for the remainder of what makes up my 32 hours for the week um, some other tasks that I do as a program manager, I have to visit all of our facilities on base. There's about 150 or 160 buildings on base. So I get to go to each one of those once a year Wow! and do an education plan, teach them how to recycle, ask them if they have questions. Right. You well, would be amazed. No, I'm not amazed because I don't, I particularly don't, it frustrates me just doing my uh, residential. Well, and and it's our recycling program out there is just as easy as anybody's basic residential you want to throw away your card or you want to recycle your cardboard your plastic and your paper that's it mm-hmm. but it amazes me how many people how many new people come on to base and don't even think about this cardboard could go in the cardboard cage which is legitimately nine times out of ten sitting right next to the dumpster right that they're just throwing the dumpster. but they throw it into the dumpster so we get to educate all these different buildings once a year twice a year once a year i have to visit all over all the buildings right. so i do about 10 to 15 a month oh wow um, so you get to be teacher too so i get to be teacher as well um and now it's a little bit harder with covid but okay. basically i say here's a flyer stay six feet away <laughs> do you have any questions? questions um here's my phone number call me okay um so some administrative things uh i have to turn in our time cards every week or every okay. two weeks make sure we get paid the kind of management take management, care of that yep i do the deal schedule the time off all that stuff okay deal with all of our sick employees or we have an employee out now on bereavement um his mm. grandmother just passed away so too bad um and then just you know your general stuff of i just started work and my grandma died can i go on bereavement pay do i still get that oh wow so then I have to, I'm in direct contact with the owner of our company. You got to clarify the situation. So I have to clarify everything through human resources. Hey, HR. he started three weeks ago. I know he doesn't have paid time off, but do we do a bereavement pay, that type of thing? Okay. Um, so I get to deal with human resources on a daily basis. Um, <clears throat> computer programs, computer mess ups. I get to deal with everything that breaks. What's easier, doing that or dealing with your wife and kids? <laughs> 
<clears throat> no, <clears throat> never mind. Just to get next, your wife, question. next question. <laughs> what about what about your career that you're doing right now? What what don't you like? What what's the biggest thing that you don't like that sticks out? And what is most enjoyable? As... Wait 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 for the question. What's most disliked and what's the most enjoyable? One each. And okay. what would you, what or how could you change it to make it better? Most disliked is probably just having to deal with people. <clears throat> no, I actually love and I. I very much enjoy dealing with people on a daily basis. I don't like dealing when things break, mm. particularly when I can't fix it. Not that I'm very handy, um, but having to deal with government officials coming out and fixing things. Oh, so you have to do it's. Oh, okay. It's not. So a, it's every, not a privately owned. It's a privately owned company. It's a privately owned oh, contractor, do... but we have what's called government furnished equipment. So if our government okay. furnished equipment okay. breaks, we have to go through the government to have it fixed. Okay, I understand. There's a lot of paperwork and uh, I. red taped. An example: our front roller door broke today. Just a, on the on the shop. Um, the at office. our shop, yeah. So. You push a button, the door goes up. You push another button, it goes down. Well, it didn't want to go down. Okay. So I had a call and, and it's, get it's a work order. It's winter right now, so it's a little chilly out. A little chilly. Okay, um, so what you have, what's it take to fix this? So I had to call the contracting office and say, hey, something broke. He gives me a number to call for another office to put in a work order. So I call them, they put in a work order. They have me call somebody else to have them schedule their civilian contractors to come out. So then their civilian contractors off base, not on base, have to call me to schedule a time to come out. That all happened within about 35 minutes. It was super easy, super nice. Well, when the civilian contractors get there, I'm not their only job for the day. So they can only work on my job for X oh. amount of time. And then they now have to go to another job. Okay. So is the door fixed or not? The door, as of the time that I left, was not fixed. However, I did get a phone call that said that it is closed. But it's not. But it, they will be working on it for the next three to five days. Okay, fantastic. So that is probably the one thing I don't like about okay. my job. What do you like? I like the freedom that I have there to be my own boss for the most part. I don't have to necessarily answer to anybody unless something's going wrong. Um, when my employees have an issue, they can directly come to me and say, hey, this is what's going on. I need I need guidance. I need help with this. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I really enjoy that. I really enjoy the hiring and firing part. I don't get to do that very often, which is great because I tend to try to vet out as best as possible a good employee. Sure. Um, Sometimes so, people will just hire to fill a position. To fill a hopefully, position. Hopefully it'll go well. Yep. Um, for jobs like this, I've found out that it's who you know. So both of my employees, I only have two, which is also another great part of my job. And you don't have to deal with a... I deal with two people. Um, both of them are my friends. Oh, there you go. So I tell them, job comes first, friendship is after work. Sure, sure. So if I ask you or tell you to do something here at work, get it done. Don't complain about it. Or if you do, I don't care that you're complaining. It's still going to get done. Right. That's your job. Yeah, it's your job. And my we'll job is to get, to, yeah. I'll still take you out to breakfast on Fridays. As long as you do your job. I just do your job. And so <laughs> that's that's something that I enjoy doing. I treat my employees to breakfast on Mondays and Fridays. Wow. Ryan and I have been <clears throat> friends forever. And he I he had a, was a part of a business uh, a year or two ago. And uh, he had brought me on to help out. And uh, his partner, something happened. Uh, Ryan, he had... Was it founded? I to this day, both Ryan and I thinks it was. Uh, There's some other stuff going on with that situation. But uh, Ryan, he his partner had Ryan fire me, and we joked just joked a week before that because somebody else within that business got fired, had to be let go. And Ryan, did you have to do that, Ryan, or did you? I was there for it, but okay. I didn't have to do that. But one. Ryan had to. So a week later, we joked. I said, you know, if you ever fire me, you're gonna have to buy me dinner. The next, it's like we've been friends so long. It's not. I mean. There's work, certain respect for each other. Mm -hmm. We've known each other. And so Ryan had to, hey, I got to fire you. Okay, well, I guess you owe me dinner uh, tomorrow or whatever. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I think it's great when you come across and you make that, that line known. Sure. You hey, I am hiring you as somebody that I know, but I expect you to do these things. Yeah, this is the job within I'm Within the operating. scope of work. Right. And know that we're going to be friends outside of work, no matter what happens. Right. And so That's my employees come in all the time and say, what are you going to fire me today? Well, I might. It could happen, but let's 
It's up to you. But tomorrow we'll still go have a drink or exactly. something. Like exactly. it, nothing's gonna change. I'll still call yeah. you and make sure grandma's doing okay. Yep, yep. Well, and Ryan still owns me. You still owe me dinner. I do. Yeah. Wow. Been, I know, I'm a slacker. <laughs> Just wanted to point that out on air on the podcast. Uh, I should so have be, done it on the company card. Yeah, we, with all the money we're making right now. No, I mean, the, from the that store. One? Yeah. You, you still have a company card? No. Mm-hmm. Should have. Uh, I should have hit you up. I should have been thinking. <laughs> Don't worry. Well, you, you'll owe me. Uh <laughs> So around the base, what, because I'm going to generalize with people that are on base that deal that are aware of what you do and who you are, or what's your what your career is, what you're doing. What do you think the biggest misconception is with the people in general public around the base about what you do, and uh, how could you change their perception? Do you think if I think our biggest misconception, think average guy or yeah, something. I think our biggest misconception yeah. is that everybody thinks that we're the trash guys, right? And so. 30 or 40 percent of the people who actually recycle recycle very well the other 60 percent think we're trash guys so we find trash everywhere and they expect us to pick it up or sort through it or clean it okay and so that's that is not my job i'm a recycle specialist i pick up recycled goods okay um but that's part of my education plan okay so i get to go around and say hey I noticed that this might have been somewhere <laughs> that it's not supposed to be. I'm not a garbage guy. So you get to go back out and point this stuff mm-hmm. out without being too rude? Yeah, no, I'm I'm very tactful. Um, I, I never point with a finger. It's always the knife hand. What you're you, doing is incorrect. You, someone here. <laughs> someone Keith, here is not quite doing what he's supposed sometimes to. Sometimes there's multiple people, so you don't actually know who it is. But. Yeah, so, I mean, I get to go out, and it, it's, it's really just an education thing. Hey, you may not have known that plastics and cans can't go together. They have to be separated. Sure. They can't. Or, or you can't throw baby diapers in my uh, cardboard. cardboard. I get that a lot. I'm like, mm. why would you even think that you could do that? But Do you ever have to go out because it keeps happening? Yes, we okay. do have some. Thank you. Okay. We do have a couple of uh, areas on base that are habitual offenders. It always is. Um, and those are just, it's and those are, the facility managers for those places know um, when they see my face. They know something obviously has gone oh, on. Oh, crap. Because he, there's he's such... He's coming. Does, does they know you by name now? They do. Okay. And most everybody knows me by name on base now. Um, I try to be as typically, as friendly as possible, um, just so I don't oh, get cussed out or, hopefully you know. You get things. Well, if you I want to keep my job. Yeah, I mean, if you put them on the defense to start and attack them, you've lost already right there. Yeah, time. I mean... Our, one of our habitual offenders is something like our dorms, our dormitory area, mm. where a bunch of airmen come in and out, and they just, yep. they're there for short stays or long stays, but there's such a turnover that sometimes you just can't get the education out there. Right. And so I understand that, and so do the facility managers. So when they see me, they said, okay, wait, where is it at? We'll get it taken care of. Right. And so, you know, that's part of the issue that we have. But sure. yeah, our, part our biggest job. misconception is I'm not a trash man. What's... Uh, we have a we have a trash company that comes on base that's that's contracted saying. out and they do their job and they do their job well. Okay. And they take care of they actually take care of the residential part of recycling. Oh. Okay. And then they do all of the big dumpster. Okay. Uh, dumps. Wow. Okay. So actually, two different situations that the residential stuff, mm-hmm. and they're dealing with all that recycling. So yep. You're just dealing with the base government end of. Yep. Base whatever. government, and then we do have like a drive-through process. Um, uh-huh where they can come in into our parking lot area and there's bins that are outside where they can oh. do their own recycling. Do you find people are doing that? Um, I would probably say 70% of recycling on base is through our drive-thru. Wow, that's that's pretty good education. Then. It's a lot of people that come from off base. They, they don't have a, a recycling oh. area. A lot of retirees mm. that just, if they're already on base to do a prescription refill or an appointment or, or something. BX or... Yeah, they drive through the recycling and drop the recycling off. That makes sense. And that's not a big deal. It's, no, it, I mean, it keeps my job. <laughs> there you go. Keeps me employed. There you go. Um, how long have you been doing this again? So I've been out there four years now. So I don't need specifics. Do you have uh, benefits at all? Do you have, being 32, I, it, that tells me it's not a full time. So that, so that, technically in Washington State it is. 32 hours is considered full time. Oh, okay. Um, however, I am not, it's not a benefited position, but they give you a stipend extra hourly. Oh, okay. Because there's something to it, though. It's not just you come out for your hourly and go home and. Yeah, so you get you get a base pay and then you get an extra stipend because they don't offer benefits. Okay. 
to kind of say, hey, here's an extra set of money if you want to go buy your own. Okay, okay. Um, but now as a project manager, I didn't realize that I was going to get this benefit. Um, my company offers a 401k plan oh. where they give me uh, was it 4%. They match 4%. If I invest 5% of my check, okay. they will give me 4%. Oh, and okay. they actually have a real, <laughs> another job I used to do, I used to sell life insurance. So I learned about investments as well. Huh. Um, so they offer a Roth IRA, Roth, Roth IRA and a 401k. So I have them put all the whole 4% into a 401k and I take my 5% and put it into a Roth IRA. Wow. So I have two retirements going for myself. Show off. And I had no idea that was even an option until wow. I got this random email that says, we've automatically enrolled you into this 401k program. I was oh. like, all right, awesome. How long ago did that start? That started October 1 last year. Brand new, but still. As soon as I took over as the project manager. Oh, okay. Wow. They're like, here, here's a 401k. And I said, perfect. And you match? All right. Free money. Wow. Yeah, for you just... Being you. For me, just going, showing up to work every day. Do you should actually show up to work? That might, another thing, does that help keep a job with your other employees? Showing up to work. On time and. Yes. And I, I have, have, go ahead. I have issues sometimes with the employees showing up to work. My youngest employee is 21. There's never any issues with young people. Mm -hmm. He likes to wait till the very last minute to get out of bed. Understandable. I was 21 once. And then speed as fast as he can to get to work. He's got a 35 minute commute. And then he shows up every single day, quote unquote on time, right as, so Reveille plays at 7 a.m. every morning on the base. He shows up at 6.59 on the dot every day. I don't understand it. He's young and you, I guess you need to help educate him. I have, but st I'm like, dude, just wake up five minutes early. Get out of bed five minutes earlier. That's it. He doesn't have to warm up his car because he parks under a carport, so he doesn't have to worry about ice or okay, snow or any of that. He literally starts his car and, and come. excuse me and leaves. Dude, mm. just leave your house five minutes mm. earlier. Give me five minutes. Yeah, it's not a big deal. But show up if you're on time, you're late. Right. Yeah. I always tell my employees that if you're on time, you're late. I don't need you to be there thirty minutes early, but I want you to be there five minutes early. Yeah, be ready. Ten to minutes go. early. Let's be ready to go. What happens if you're driving to work and you forgot to get gas one day? And right. that can happen. Or your car breaks down. Or your car breaks down. You blow yep. a tire on the freeway. You're right outside the base and I can come get you. Yeah, well, and I will. I <laughs> I got a phone call. My car won't start. I said, I'm on my way. There you go. I may already be on base and I will drive the 35 minutes. I'm picking you up because you're showing up to work today. Right. Obviously, <clears throat> he's there for a reason. He has mm -hmm. a job because he's... He is a, when he is there, he is a hard worker. When he's there. And he does his job. And he's there every single day. He is probably the employee that I've had that will consistently show up no matter what. Right. Sick, not sick. Right. Doesn't call in. He'll be late. Um, on the line. Or right on the line. He was, I think he's only been late twice hmm. since he's worked there in six months. But he called me and said, two weeks ago, he called me and says, no, I called him and I was like, where are you at? Because it's 724. And I'm oh, like, geez. there's no reason that he's right. ever this late. Because he's never been that late. Where are you at? And he goes, oh my God, you just woke me up. And I was like, <laughs> do you realize what time it is? Right. I'm on my way. I'm like, yeah, you better be. <laughs> but I mean, it, sometimes that, that, life that, happens. Yeah, that does. I actually had something like that happen to me. I hired a brand new employee in December. Mm -hmm. He worked one day and then came down with a sickness. It wasn't COVID, but it was damn near COVID. Mm. And so he was literally out 14 days. Wow. And his body just would not allow him to get healthy enough to come back to work. Right, right. And I didn't want that around. Yep, and these days you got to be real So I said, just conscious. stay home. Yep. His, you know, life happens. His grandma just died. Now he has to take mm. bereavement pay. Wow. Like, he was so worried about losing his job. Sure. Understandably. Yeah. You're but right. we have the flexibility out of the Air Force Base in a government contract to be like, hey, we can do without you for a week or two if it's going to be a sickness that's going to close, right, end up closing us down in the end. Right. It's going to put a lot more stress and a lot more work on the other two employees, mm -hmm. but we'll, we'll do get it. it done. Yep. So doing what you're doing now, what or anything that you've done, what advice would you give somebody younger to help them? To, with you, Keith, you've done so many different things. You've been through a lot. You, dad is 17. What advice or what perspective would you give somebody
going through something or that might go through something, um, that's why we do the show is hopefully keep some information, a nugget of information to help people out. Never quit. Um, and that, that can go a couple of different ways, but don't give up on yourself. Um, show up to a job ready to do the work, even if you don't enjoy doing the work. Sure. Like show up and give 100% because your employee or your employers will see that. Right. Um, but I always give the advice of people is you don't, you don't have the right to quit on yourself or others. I, you know, I've, I've been on, you know, football teams. I've been in the Marine Corps. I've been married now. Um, and married life with kids, it's not easy. Um, but I've just kind of recently over the last few years have realized that <clears throat> quitting is the easy way out. Mm -hmm. And I tell when I was coaching football, I was coaching eighth grade football for my son's team. And I said, if you, you not only quit on yourself, but you're quitting on everybody else. If you quit on one play and my quarterback gets sacked or my quarterback can't make that throw because he quit, you know, what does that show you for the future? What, what does that show your coach? What does that show your teammates, your potential employer that might be watching a game? Because you never know. That's true. I could hire. I plan on hiring my 17 year old when he turns 18 out on the base. Nice. But I know where he's lazy, what he lacks in, what he's really right. good in. Well, that's good management to be able to see the, the weaknesses and help and fix or work on that and their strengths to utilize So I've them. gotten to that point where I just tell people, you don't have the right to quit because you're quitting on yourself and you're quitting on everybody else. It's true. Push through, strive to be your best at everything that you do, yep. even if you don't enjoy it. There are countless jobs that I have not enjoyed, <laughs> but I work for a paycheck and I have to show up. Yes, your incentive was your wife and kids. Yes, I'm not um, saying not yourself, but and you already stipulated your dad role yes, model, so you're going to. But I always, I always say you have to work for yourself before you can work for others. Yeah. Um, if you're not doing something for you, you can't help somebody else. Hmm. I heard a saying from my pastor a long time ago that said, "Hurt people, hurt people." which means wow. healed people, heal, heal other people. Mm -hmm. So if you're a hurt person, mm -hmm. you can't help somebody else necessarily because you're hurting, right? Okay. I mean, they can be debated back and forth. Yeah, yeah, I'm not arguing with you. I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm but rattling my head. If you're a healed person, if you already know what you're doing or you've kind mm -hmm. of been through that situation. Sure, sure, that makes you sense. You can then yeah. reach out and help somebody else. Sure, sure, help give them some perspective or guidance. Right. So yeah. I always tell people, if you can't help yourself first, yeah. then you should not be helping somebody I'm else. I'm always trying to help myself and it doesn't turn out well. I help myself to the cookies and get swatted with them. <laughs> what other career or dream job did you have as a kid? Did you want to be an astronaut? Did you want to be a cowboy? Did you... My dream job as a child, I wanted to... I'm a... For better or for worse, I'm a Kansas City Chiefs fan. I noticed you were wearing the Kansas City Chiefs uh, hoodie. I was. I took and that off. And you're from Kansas City, so you're legit on that. I am legit. Okay. I um, I wanted to be the starting running back, really for any NFL team, but if it was the Chiefs, sure, like you're, that would have been team. my dream team. Sure. Um, I was a really good athlete up until I had my kid. I had scholarship opportunities. College reaches out. Colleges reaching out to me saying, "Hey, we want you to play here." And then once you have a kid, the college scholarships kind of dwindle wow. and go away. Um, so my absolute dream job would have been to play professional sports somewhere. Wow. Um, so I get to live vicariously through coaching. I think mm -hmm. my dream job now as a 34-year-old, quote-unquote adult, I guess. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm quote-unquote an adult. <laughs> yeah, is... Brian? Yeah, I'm quoted. Quoted? Yeah, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm quoted. a quoted adult quoted. at this point. I want to I wanna be around kids and work with kids sure. um, because I want... I've had such a interesting upbringing as a child yeah, obviously that i can give that back to a kid right sure um You've gone through a lot and learned a lot so if i can do that through coaching and i can coach an aspect uh, aspect <laughs> i don't know if that's a range of sports um i don't know you tell me what are you trying to say keith just so I've, so I've coached football i've coached baseball not very good at that one coach basketball eh, i'm okay <laughs> at that one and i coach wrestling i can coach wrestling so yeah. wrestling and football are my two main sports sure but if I can get in there and say, so my pre 
yearly speech when I get all the parents together and all the kids together. I said, I'm not going to ask you to do something I have not done myself or I'm not willing to get down and do next to you at the same time. Right. Know that. Lead by example. I will lead by, I will not lead from the back. Right. I will not whip your kids into shape. I will be in the front and they will follow. There you go. Um, so I try to take that into my aspect. So I want to be, I want to be a coach. So currently, nice segue. Correct. Currently, I am a uh, a mascot for a professional sports team here in town. You are a mascot. I was just going to touch on that. We're going to have to have you back to go over that at this point because... Because I talk a lot. No, it's all good. You've done so much, which is a good thing. But I, I, I want to have you back to actually go more into that end of it because that's where we met uh, several years ago, like four or five, six years four ago. Five, six, yeah. Where you are, you've been a professional, you're a mascot for a professional arena indoor football team. Correct. In Spokane. In Spokane. And um, so you will be again. Now, I will be again for the 2021 season. The Spokane Shock are coming back. Um, but the segue between that and coaching is I've talked to the head coach of the Spokane Shock, Billy Beck, and I said, hey, I want to learn what I can learn because I want to coach. And he's been coaching and he's been very and he's successful. He's been very successful in what he does. And he's at a level I don't necessarily strive to be only because I don't necessarily want to coach the adult kids. Mm -hmm. I want to keep my coaching between probably eighth. So like last year of middle school into high school, because I think that's where kids are most impressionable. And so that's kind of what I want to do. I want to coach those kind of kids. Sure. Um, but you want to learn everything he can but, teach you? But I want to learn everything I can learn from anybody. Sure. I got to work with Adam Shackelford, who was the former head coach. Mm -hmm. um, I got to work with him for two years. And I drain knowledge from his head every day. Nice. I bet at some point he was like, dude, just stop asking questions. <laughs> but I had you know, my little notepad. And I'm just like, well, why would you do something like that? Or why is this warm up or drill that we're doing at practice what does that do for this person right okay and if he didn't have the answer he's like okay go to my wide receivers coach go to my defensive backs coach go to my defensive okay. coordinator and i could just go around and say hey why are we doing this why does this what happens when you do this what happens if you do this wrong what happens if you do it right so i can then build my knowledge base because you can take what they're teaching professional athletes on any scale you can oh, take it to sure. college you can take the high school you can take it to if you're smart enough to, to use it properly, yeah. are, you, are you smart enough? Uh, we'll so far, <laughs> so far I've been okay at we'll, teaching kids. We'll find out. Coaching. We'll so. find out. We will get into that when we have you back. Uh, any questions for Mr. King? No. Interesting life, interesting perspective. Life's been a challenge, but as you say, you don't give up. Never ever give up. As Strive a, to be your best. Our, our saying is make it happen because who else is going to do it? Right. Don't stress over something that you can't control. Or circle of concern, circle of influence. If you circle of concern is, can you, is it something within your reality in your life that's majorly bothering you? That, and can you change it? Mm -hmm. so can you influence that? Certain things in this world I can't change. I don't know how to. I'm the most positive person you'll ever meet. Uh, you, you're, I, I have several that are equal to you. Uh, good luck. <laughs> thank you keith uh thank you for being on the show we will get you back uh you are the mascot for the spokane shock indoor for the yeah. ifl yes start seeing the starts in april and probably about that time i'm thinking we'll have you on in march april you may or may not see me in costume let's uh tune in we'll hopefully, find out hopefully we will hopefully we'll be able to get our uh, youtube channel up and going keith oh did i slip on that one i didn't hear anything i don't know i've uh, uh, selected here well you're married marine corps thing M married Oh, yeah, Kids? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. What, honey? <laughs> Thank you for listening to Career Paths by Infonet. Uh, please subscribe. If you got any comments, leave them. Let us know what we could do better, what we could do worse. If I suck, um, if Keith... If I suck, Keith, let me know. He did. You did, Keith. You already know that, but uh, there you go. Like, share, comment, subscribe. It's all you have to He's, do. It's super easy. You do have a... You're working on... You do have something online. Uh, I have a Twitch account, uh, so I stream... Plug in. I stream with my kid, my 17-year-old. It's uh, twitch.tv forward slash a-o-n-s-o-u-l-j-a-h a-o-n soldier and uh yeah like subscribe follow there you go just like uh career paths let's go making it happen uh thank you very much we'll see you next time thanks keith appreciate it brother appreciate you till next time awkward pause <laughs>